welcome to the MSBT online learning platform. We bring you the most relevant topic in an exciting digital format. Today, we'll be studying a very interesting module from Applied Mathematics, Applications of Definite Integration, which includes topic Properties of Definite Integration, where we'll be studying some interesting facts about applications of definite integration and we will be practicing some of the examples based on it. So, let us begin. So today, our module is Applications of Definite Integration and the topic we are covering is Properties of Definite Integration. The learning objectives for this topic are Solving the problems with the help of substitution in definite integrals. To use the method of integration by paths. Solving problems using properties of definite integrals. So these are the three objectives we will be covering today. Learning outcomes. Method of substitution simplifies integration. Learning to use integration by paths to solve problems based on definite integrals. How to use properties of definite integrals. So these are the three learning outcomes that we will be understanding today. All right, definite integration by substitution method. Substitution method demands change in limits due to change in function. So let us see where do we use the method of substitution to solve definite integrals. Yes, let us see this first example. It is integration from 0 to pi by 2 sin squared x cos x dx. Now this function will be solved by the help of the substitution method. So we can integrate it only after substitution. Let us see what will be the substitution here students. Let i be equal to 0 to pi by 2 sin squared x cos x dx. Now here what is being substituted here is sin x. Sin x is going to be substituted as t. So whenever you take the substitution here in the integral, you will need to first derivate whatever you have taken as the substitution. So when we derivate t is equal to sin x, we get dt. t becomes dt and sin x is differentiated as cos x dx. Now what is very important to remember and understand is you can see this table here. Now what does this table say? The table is when you are changing the variable, since you have done a substitution, your variable changes from x to t. All right. So in that case, the function is also changing. So whenever you're changing the variables, now here 0 to pi by 2, these limits are based on x, on the variable x. So now you have to change these limits to a variable t since we have taken the substitution. So what you will do here is you will take x as equal to 0 and x as equal to pi by 2. Now when you're taking x as 0, you have to understand what is the value of t when x is 0. Substitute x is 0 here, you get t is equal to sin 0, hence you get the value of t as equal to 0. So when x is 0, t is 0. Similarly, when x is pi by 2, so here you substitute x as pi by 2, so t will be equal to sin pi by 2. Sin pi by 2 is sin 90, the value of sin 90 is 1, therefore the value of t becomes 1. So what happens here is your limits 0 to pi by 2 changes to 0 to 1 when you are solving and understanding the integration. See here, it is changed 0 to 1 and you have substituted sin squared x as t squared and you have substituted cos x dx as dt and this is the substitution and hence now you get an integral which is in terms of t. So we will be integrating this function with respect to t. t squared will be integrated in the form t cube by 3 that is with the same as integration of x raised to n. Once integrated you will be solving by applying the limits. 
upper limit is first that means you take t as equal to the upper limit t is equal to 1 so that will become 1 by 3 and then t is equal to 0 so you get 1 by 3 minus 0 hence the answer is i is equal to 1 by 3 so is that understood students this is the method of substitution that you need to use to solve definite integra integral sums let us see another example Yes, now this is an important sum to understand. It is integration from 0 to pi by 2 dx upon 5 plus 4 cos x. Now if you recollect, you must have done indefinite integration 1 upon a plus b cos x or 1 upon a plus b sin x or 1 upon a sin x plus b cos x plus c. These integrals, these forms of integrals are solved in a particular way by doing a fixed substitution. Now, what is that fixed substitution? You will be put, you will put t is equal to tan x by 2. These are the fixed substitutions that you will be applying here in the given integral. Put t is equal to tan x by 2. dx will be substituted as 2 dt upon 1 plus t squared and cos x will be substituted as 1 minus t squared upon 1 plus t squared. So all these will be substituted in the given function. Other than that, as I said, the limits are x is equal to 0 to pi by 2. It is the limits are for x, that is for the variable x. Now since you are applying substitution method, you will be also changing the limits accordingly. So here, since t is taken as tan x by 2, now you can see this table. So when you will be taking x as 0 and x as pi by 2, so x as 0 and x as pi by 2, you will substitute x is equal to 0 here to get the value of t. So t will be equal to 0 since tan 0 is 0. Then you will also take pi by 2, that is the upper limit. So here when x is pi by 2, t will become tan pi by 4. Now tan pi by 4 is tan 45, the value of tan 45 is 1. So now the limits have changed from 0 to pi by 2 to 0 to 1, okay. So that is for your variable t. All these substitutions including the limits will be taken in the integral now and we get 0 to 1, that is the change in the limits. For dx, you substituted 2 dt upon 1 plus t squared, 5 plus 4, it was cos x here. So the cos x has been substituted as 1 minus t squared upon 1 plus t squared. What we will do further is, we will take LCM of 1 plus t squared in the denominator. So we get 2 dt upon 1 plus t squared, the 5 is going to be multiplied with the 1 plus t squared and we get 5 into 1 plus t squared plus 4 into 1 minus t squared upon 1 plus t squared. Now you can see these 1 plus t squareds can get cancelled. So we cancel this 1 plus t squared here and solve this. So when we solve this, that is this solve 5 into 1 plus t squared plus 4 into 1 minus t squared. In the sense you open bracket, multiply the 5 inside, multiply the 4 inside. What we get is here 5 plus 5t squared plus 4 minus 4t squared. And we can cancel these denominators 1 plus t squared. So 5 plus 4, 9. 5t squared minus 4t squared, t squared. So what we get is 2dt upon 9 plus t squared. Integration is from 0 to 1. Now, how will we integrate 9 plus t squared which is there in the denominator students? Yes, anybody can think of the formula that we will be applying here, formula of integration. Now, can you understand that 9 plus t squared is in the form 3 squared plus t squared? We have done this earlier. What is 1 upon a squared plus x squared? The integration of 1 upon a squared plus x squared dx is, yes, 1 upon a tan inverse x upon a plus c. So that is the formula that we are going to apply here. So it becomes the 2 that is, which is a constant coefficient can be taken outside the integration sign. Since we are not going to integrate a constant coefficient, then it is the denominator 9 plus t squared is written in the form 3 squared plus t squared and hence 
you will be solving using the formula 2 into 1 by 3 that is in the form 1 by a tan inverse x by a. So, it becomes 1 by 3 tan inverse t by 3 limits taken from 0 to 1. So, now we will apply the upper limit. Upper limit that means you will take t is equal to 1 first. So, the 2 by 3 will be outside and you get tan inverse 1 by 3 when t is equal to 1 and then you apply the lower limit minus tan inverse 0. So, now tan inverse 1 by 3 we do not know the value. So, we leave the tan inverse 1 by 3 as it is and tan inverse 0 is 0. Hence, we get the answer as 2 by 3 tan inverse 1 by 3. Alright, now a very important aspect integration by parts which you all have already done in definite integration, indefinite integration. So, we are going to use the same formula here of integration by parts using the Lyot rule, but there will be a slight difference in how to use the limits, how to apply the limits in the given formula. So, let us see example integration from 0 to 1 x into e raised to x dx. Now, you can understand this function x. What kind of a function is this x? Can anyone identify what type of a function is x? Yes. It is an algebraic function and what about e raised to x? What kind of a function is e raised to x? e raised to x would be an exponential function. So, according to Lyot rule, what would be your function u and what will be your function v that you should be able to identify. So, let us see. Yes. So, here x e raised to x as per Lyot rule, algebraic, algebraic function comes first exponential function comes later that means x will be the function u and e raised to x will be the function v. So, now using our integration by parts formula x integration of e raised to x dx limits from 0 to 1 as I said the limits will be written outside then minus integration from 0 to 1 you will derivate u. What is the function u here? The function u here is nothing else but x. So, derivative of x into the integration of e raised to x dx. So, what we will be doing here is we will be doing the integrations as well as the derivative part first. So, what we get x e raised to x integration of e raised to x derivative of x is 1 again integration of e raised to x is e raised to x and limits for this function 0 to 1 and we still need to integrate the second part. So, that would be x e raised to x integration uh, limits from 0 to 1 integration of e raised to x e raised to x limits taken from 0 to 1. Now, here you need to carefully apply the limits. How will it be done? You understand this. First, for the function x e raised to x, you will apply the upper limit minus the lower limit. That means, you will take x is equal to 1. So, you can see it is x into e raised to x. So, what you get is x is 1 e raised to 1. So, what do we get here is e minus the lower limit. The lower limit is 0. That means, when we take x as equal to 0, we are directly getting e minus 0. All right. That would be the application of the limits on the first part. In the second part, it is e raised to x e raised to x. Now, first upper limit. So, taking x as 1. So, when you take x as 1, you get e raised to 1 which is e minus. When you take x as equal to 0, e raised to 0, anything raised to 0 we are knowing is always equal to 1. So, we get e minus 1. Now, solving this further, you can see we are getting i is equal to 1 because the e gets cancelled here and we get minus minus plus 1. So, the answer will be i is equal to 1. All right. Let us now see another example based on using integration by parts. Yes, integration from 0 to 1 x into tan inverse x dx. First, let us identify what type of a function is x. Function x is an algebraic function. Tan inverse x would be an inverse function. So, in that case, what would be your function u and what would be your function v as per Lyot rule? Yes, x would be your function v and u will be the function tan inverse x. So, using the 
integration by paths formula. Let us see what do we do. Yes, so this is our formula integrating by paths formula. So we are going to use the Lyot rule and use integration by paths formula. Taking u as tan inverse x and taking v as equal to x. Let us see what do we get here. So this is tan inverse x into integration of x dx limits from 0 to 1 minus integration from 0 to 1 derivative of tan inverse x since u is a differentiable function into integration of x dx that is the integrable function. So solving this further we are going to integrate x here and there and derivate tan inverse x in the next step. So here what do we get? Integration of x dx that would be x squared by 2 and tan inverse x, derivative of tan inverse x. What will be the derivative of tan inverse x? 1 by 1 plus x squared into integration of x here again which will be x squared by 2. Solving further, what do we get here is taking x as equal to 1 that is applying the upper limit. So this will become tan inverse 1. In fact, first this half has been taken out. Since earlier I also said that you will be not solving whatever constant coefficients are there. So you keep them outside, take them outside the brackets and then you can apply the limits which is easier to understand. So taking x as equal to 1 here upper limit. So this becomes tan inverse 1 half has already gone outside into 1 squared minus taking x as equal to 0 that is the lower limit. We get tan inverse 0 which is 0 and also x squared is also a 0 hence minus 0. Then here again the half has been taken outside the integration sign and what are we doing here? Can you note this step? What are we doing in this step? Here we are having 1 into x squared, correct? So that is the numerator. What we will do is we will add and subtract 1 in the numerator so that we get a term in the numerator which is similar to the denominator term which is 1 plus x squared, alright? This is integration of rational functions. This is what we do here. So you can see this is pi by 8 after solving uh, the first part minus half into integration from 0 to 1, 1 minus 1 plus x squared. So what has happened is we have split the numerator 1 plus x squared minus 1. So 1 plus x squared upon 1 plus x squared minus 1 upon x squared we get 1 upon 1 minus x squared. This is what we get once we split the numerator. So now after that we integrate 1 and we integrate the 1 plus x squared. So what do we get here? Pi by 8 minus half into integration of 1 is x, integration of 1 by 1 plus x squared tan inverse x. Now application of the limits, upper limit x is equal to 1. So here you write a 1 minus a tan inverse 1 and then lower limit minus the value taking x as equal to 0 for the lower, li for the lower limit. We get pi by 8 minus half into as I said 1 minus tan inverse 1 when you are taking x as 1 minus the whole thing will be 0 when you are applying the lower limit. So again here tan inverse 1 we will take the value of tan inverse 1 which is pi by 4. So here pi by 8 minus half into 1 minus pi by 4. This is what we get. And once we solve this, so we multiply the half inside, what we get is the answer which is pi by 4 minus half. Properties, properties of definite integration are very important to understand because their application simplifies the integration. Yes, the first property integration from a to b f of x dx will be equal to integration from a to b f of a plus b minus x. That means if I need to use this property provided I am given the limits as a to b, I will replace x in the given function by a plus b minus x. That is what I am supposed to do if I am wanting to use the first property. Second property, let us see that integration from 0 to a, 
Now, if it is something like 0 to pi by 2 or 0 to 1 or 0 to 2, then in that case you will be using the second property that means the lower limit will be equal to 0. So, 0 to a f of x dx that will be equal to 0 to a f of a minus x dx. So, in such a case what we can do is we are going to replace the x in the given function by a minus x. So, this is how we are going to use the properties. Let us see. Let us see with the help of an example how to use the properties and in what type of sums are we going to use these properties. Yes, let us let's take the first sum. It is integration from 0 to pi by 2 cube root of sin x upon cube root of sin x plus cube root of cos x dx. Now, you can see it is from 0 to pi by 2. So, you can understand which property we are going to use students here. Yes, it is going to be the property of 0 to a. That is the property number 2 which we saw in the previous slide. So, that is, let us see. First, let i be equal to using property. Yes, this is the property that we are using. So, integration from 0 to a f of x dx is equal to 0 to a f of a minus x dx. All right, using this property we can see it is 0 to pi by 2. So, what, ha what happens is as I said earlier, you are going to replace the function x with a minus x. That means in this case you are going to replace, what is a in this example? You can understand this is from 0 to a. So, what will be your a? a will be equal to pi by 2, right? So, here you are going to replace wherever there is an x, you replace the x with a pi by 2 minus x as per the property. So, it is becomes cube root of sin pi by 2 minus x upon cube root of sin pi by 2 minus x plus cube, cube root of cos pi by 2 minus x. So, we are going to use the, we are going to replace the x with an a minus x only in the given function. Okay. Now, proceeding further, you remember these uh, formulas which we have done again in the first semester? Trigonometric formulas which are very important. Whenever we need to change a trigonometric ratio, we use the angle as pi by 2 minus x. So, here sin pi by 2 minus x is cos x and cos pi by 2 minus x is sin x. So, we are going to apply these formulas in the given function. See, this is what we get. And we have named this as equation 2 and the integral that we started with that is going to be named as equation 1. Okay, so now this method of solving is uh, practically the same. Let us see how it is. The next part is adding equation 1 and 2. So, as I said equation 1 is the integral that we started with. That was the question itself that is named as equation 1 and after using the property what we obtain is named as equation 2. Now, adding equation 1 and 2 is the next step. So, what do you get when you add? You can see just written the equation 1 plus equation 2. Now, you can see the denominators of equation 1 and equation 2 are the same. Hence, we can add the numerators by taking LCM. So, the LCM would be cube root of sin x plus cube root of cos x. That will be the denominators. So, what do we get? cube root of cos x plus cube root of sin x in the numerator upon the denominator which will be cube root of cos x plus cube root of sin x. Now, you can see both are the same hence we can cancel them and we get 1 dx which is very easy to integrate. So, using the property has simplified the integration part for us. So, integration of 1 dx is x. Now, applying the limits from 0 to pi by 2 taking x as pi by 2 minus x as 0. So, we get pi by 2 minus 0 and that is pi by 2. Now, you can see on the left hand side when we added, when we added equation 1 and equation 2, both are equal to i. So, the left hand side will become 2i. That 2i will be equal to pi by 2. So, here you can see this 2i from this step onwards, you can see it is all, they are all equal to, all these steps are equal to 2i. So, that means the final answer here after integration and after application of the limits, the answer is pi by 2. So, here pi by 2 is actually equal to 2i. So, please do not forget to do this. What? 
take the two in the denominator of the right hand side, which students sometimes you all tend to forget. So please don't forget to do that. So you get the final answer i is equal to pi by 4. So this is how we use the property of definite integration to simplify the integral problem. Let us see another example using these properties. All right, 0 to 5, integration from 0 to 5, square root of 9 minus x upon square root of 9 minus x plus x plus 4. Now here, let i be equal to the given integral. Can you identify what property will be using will we be using here, students? Since it's given 0 to 5, so automatically you will be using the property integration from 0 to a f of x dx, which is 0 to integration from 0 to a f of a minus x dx. Yes. So this is the property that we will be using because the integration or because the limits to the integration given is 0 to 5. So identifying it in that way. So here again. We are going to replace x with a minus x. In this case, what do you identify a as? 5. And this is i equal to, so as I said, whichever equation we have started with, that equation is going to be named as 1. So now when I use this property, I am going to replace the x with a 5 minus x. Yes. So it becomes square root of 9 minus 5 minus x. So wherever there was the x, you can see they have all been replaced with 5 minus x. Now solving further, what do we get? See, 9 minus 5, x plus 4. Again, denominator, square root of x plus 4 plus this 5 plus 4, 9 minus x. So this is what we get after using the property and that will be named as equation and also, this is also equation i equal to, correct? The first one was also equal, i equal to and the, the one that is the named as equation 2 is also i equal to. So, the next step would be, what are we going to do students now in the next step? Yes, adding equation 1 and 2, that will be our next step. So, adding equation 1 and 2, the left hand side will become 2i and right hand side we will be adding the two equations or rather the two integrals that we got. So here, now when we add, you can see again, the denominators are the same. So the numerators can be added by taking LCM. So the numerator will become root of 9 minus x plus root of x plus 4 upon the denominator given here. So what do we get? Root of x plus 4 plus root of 9 minus x upon root of x plus 4 plus root of 9 minus x. Again. It is the same. They are both the same numerator and denominator and hence can be cancelled and we get integration of 1 dx. Simple. So now that 1 integrated will become x. Now applying the limits, we get 5 minus 0. Yes, upper limit minus lower limit. So that is 2i is equal to 5. So hence, what will be i? i will be equal to 5 by 2, not to forget to take the 2 down in the denominator on the right hand side. Okay. So these were problems based on properties of definite integration. Let us see further some more examples. Alright, here you are having i is equal to 2 to 7 root x upon root x plus root 9 minus 6. So what was different from the previous problem and what is different in this problem? Can you all identify the difference? Yes, students. Yes, what is different? The difference is in the limits. There, the limits were from 0 to a. Here, the limits are in the form, in the form a to b. Correct. So, accordingly, which property are we going to use here? Which property of definite integration? Let us see. Yes, we are going to use this property, which is integration from a to b, f of x dx which is equal to integration from a to b f of a plus b minus x dx. That means now in this question, using this property, we need to replace x with a plus b minus x. So first let us identify what is this a and b in the question. a is 2 and b is 7, right? So a plus b minus x means I will replace the x with 2 plus 7 
minus x. That is what I am going to replace the x in the given function. And this is i equal to naming that first equation as equation 1. Now, in the next step, we will use the property. See here, we use the property a plus b minus x. In this case, 2 plus 7 minus x. That means the x has been replaced with 2 plus 7 minus x. So now, when we solve, in the numerator, we get a root of 9 minus x and denominator root of 9 minus x plus you can see root x dx. Now, after application of the property, we are going to name that as equation 2. What will be the next step students? We will be adding equation 1 and 2. So, again LHS will be i plus i which will be 2i and RHS we will be adding the integral which was in equation 1 and the integral which is in equation 2 and we get here. This is what we get. So, i plus i LHS and RHS we add the integrals. Denominators are the same. So, taking LCM we add the numerators. So, it becomes root x plus root of 9 minus x. Adding the numerators upon the denominator root x plus root of 9 minus x which is again the same. So, we can cancel the numerator and denominator and get integration of 1 dx. So, 2i is equal to integration of 1 dx and the limits are from 2 to 7. Do not forget the limits. We need to write down the limits in each and every step and then finally not to forget to apply them also. So, integration of 1 dx, x. Then application of the limits becomes 7 minus 2. So, 2i is equal to 7 minus 2. So, what will be i equal to? Yes, i will be equal to 5 by 2. So, this was the other property which we have used of definite integration where the integration is or where the limits are from a to b. Let us see another example and why don't you all try to do the sum along with me. Yes, integration is from 3 to 7, 10 minus x the whole square upon x squared plus 10 minus x the whole square. Here again it is integration from a to b. So, we are going to apply the property integration from a to b of f of x dx. Let us see, that will be integration from a to b f of a plus b minus x. Let us identify what is a and b here, a is equal to 3, b is equal to 7. Naming that as equation 1 here, that is i equal to and now when we use this property, I am going to replace x with, yes, what will we replace x with now here? Students, x will be replaced with 3 plus 7 minus x as per the property of definite integration. So, you can see in this step 3 plus 7 minus x. So, wherever we had the x, that x we have replaced it with 3 plus 7 minus x. Now, just simplifying, what do we get? In the numerator, we just simply get x squared. And in the denominator, I get 10 minus x the whole squared plus x squared. Naming that as equation 2 after using the property. Adding 1 and 2, if you remember now, we are supposed to do the same method. The method is practically the same when we are using the properties of definite integration. Method is the same, only you have to identify which property to be used in which sum. So, here when we add equations 1 and 2, what do we get? i plus i LHS, RHS adding the integrals, again numerators will be added because the denominators are the same. So, taking LCM we can add the numerators and therefore we get 2i is equal to x squared plus 10 minus x the whole squared upon 10 minus x the whole squared plus x squared. The terms can get cancelled and we get integration of 1 dx. So, 2i is equal to integration from 3 to 7, 1 dx. Integration of 1 dx, x. Now, we apply the limits. Limits is 7 minus 3, upper limit minus lower limit. So, we get the answer 2i is equal to 4, therefore, i is equal to 2.
solving the problems with the help of substitution in definite integrals, to use the method of integration by paths, solving problems using properties of definite integra integrals. Conclusion, we have applied method of substitution, integration by parts to solve sums based on definite integration. We have applied properties of definite integration to solve sums. Okay, first and foremost, wherever necessary brackets should be used to while solving the sums. Many a time students are not using brackets. Because of that, it happens that the sum goes wrong, your answer goes wrong. So please do not forget to put brackets wherever necessary. Then, in the final step after integration, we should apply the limits to solve and obtain a numerical value. Whenever a function in x is changed to a function in t, method of substitution, correct? So where we are using method of substitution, the function in x is changing to a function in t. We should not forget. What should we not forget? We should not forget to change the limits. Because if we don't change the limits and we continue doing the sum, again your answer will come wrong, right? So we should change the limits because the function has changed. So this is another learning for you all or something that you need to remember. The properties of definite integration when applied to a given integral simplifies the integration method. Well students, I hope you have followed the sums that we have solved today. Do you have any questions or any queries as per whatever we have done today? Yes, I have one question. How will we understand when to apply the properties of definite integrals? Okay, so you want to know when to apply the properties of definite integra integra integrals. A very good question because we need to understand where to apply the properties and how to, how to apply the properties. Okay, now whenever you have questions with co-ratios, co-ratios means in the sense you are having sine and cos in the sums. There, in that case, you will be using some property of definite integrals. Also, if you see, supposing the limits are given from 3 to 7 for a particular integral. 3 to 7, if I add the two limits, that is 3 plus 7, 10, I will have this numeral 10 somewhere in my given function which will be a way of identifying to use a property. Maybe 0 to 5. If I am given 0 to 5, what is the sum of these two limits? 0 plus 5, 5. That means I will have this 5 somewhere in the given integral. So that is a way of identifying and understanding that some property of definite integrals has to be used. I hope I have solved your query. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So now you are fully competent to solve the problems of definite integrals. So worksheet is given below. Try to solve it. Let's hope that you all have solved these sums and let us see and you can verify whatever you all have done. Yes, the first sum that we had written, integration from 0 to pi by 2 sin x upon 1 plus cos x the whole cube. This is the sum that we solved by the method of substitution. So see what is the substitution. After doing the substitution, we always derivate the substitution and we always change the limits because the function has changed. So the limits also will be changing as per the function. And you can see it has been highlighted. 
because it is very important part of the sum, which students you all tend to forget. Please verify. Then in the next sum, it is a sum where again the t substitution will be done, where you will be taking t as equal to sin x. So when we take t as equal to sin x, we, de we first derivated and then again what is highlighted is the change in limits. Limits have to be changed because the function has changed. Now here this particular integral will be solved by the help of partial fractions. So you will be solving by partial fractions, obtaining the partial fractions and then using the partial fractions for the integrand and integrating it, applying the limits and obtaining the answer. Now this is integration from 1 to e log x base e dx. The function which is already present which is log x base e that will be taken as a function u and 1 will always be taken as a function v and we will be integrating by parts using the Lyot rule. And we have already seen how to use integration by parts for definite integration. Here the limits are taken from 1 to e. So using integration by parts formula, this is how the sum has been solved. See whether you have made any mistake in the sum or whether you got stuck somewhere in any step. So you should be able to solve it further because the solution is right there in front of you now. All right, another example which was the moderate type of sum. Here you are going to use the property 0 to a f of x dx because you can see in the question it is given 0 to 7. So obviously when it is given 0 to 7, you have to use the property 0 to a f of x dx. So 0 to a f of a minus x. Now what is 0 plus 7? Remember I told you that tip 0 to 7 will be 7. 0 plus 7 will be 7 and you can see the 7 is present here. So that will be where you will identify that a property has to be used and getting the final answer which is 7 by 2. Similar manner another, another integral where you are having integration from 3 to 5. Now what is 3 plus 5? 3 plus 5 is 8, right? So here you can see the 8 is present. So what you are going to do? You are going to use this property which we have used earlier because it is a to b and here also it is 3 to 5. So you are going to use this property 3 to 5 it is given to you for a to b. So using the property in the same method of solving which we have solved earlier, adding equations, solving the numerators, cancelling the numerator and denominator, integrating applying limits and obtaining the answer. Another example of using the Lyot rule and integrating by parts. So this is how the sum is going to be solved. Here there will be integration by parts done twice in the sum. Well the reason is you will be getting a integration x e raised to x here, alright after the first integration, after the first integration by parts, you will get another 0 to 1 x e raised to it. That means again you will get this product, product of two functions, which again you have to solve by no other means but integration by parts. So do not forget, wherever you are having product of two functions, you need to integrate by parts. So this is the answer which is e minus 2. As I said about this example, it is in the form 1 upon 1 plus square root of cos, cortex. Cortex, tan x, if such, uh, if such functions are given to you in the integral, you will always convert them into sine and cos. Now we know that cortex is cos by sine. So we will be using cortex as cos by sine. So you can see I have highlighted the cortex because the cortex has to be taken as cos by sine. That is the first method of solving such type of sums where you are having cot and tan. Tan if tan is there you will take it as sin by cos. Okay? And you can see pi by 6 to pi by 3 that has been highlighted because pi by 6 to pi by 3 means what property are you going to use here? That is what you need to understand. So pi by 6 to pi by 3 means you are going to use the property where the integration is from A to B. 
Yes. So, using this property integration from a to b f of x dx, we are going to solve the sum replacing the x with in this sum your x is being replaced with pi by 6 plus pi by 3 minus x. Okay. Now, pi by 6 plus pi by 3 is nothing else but pi by 2. So, this becomes pi by 2 minus x, pi by 2 minus x and pi by 2 minus x. So, here you can see sin pi by 2 minus x cos x cos pi by 2 minus x is sin x. So, this is what we are again going to use here in the given integrals after using the property. So, it is the same method further we get equation 2 adding equation 1 and 2 cancelling the numerator and denominator integrating what we get applying the limits and obtaining the answer. All right. Let us see what is going to be your next topic which you will be learning. The module is the same applications of definite integration, but you will be learning the topic of area under the curve. Thank you. You have learned some important topics so far and we hope you had a good time learning with us. Browse through our online library for more content on the MSBT website. Thank you. Stay connected. Happy learning.